talk about how to get into medical school. So as you may or may not already know, getting into medical school is one of the toughest parts of becoming a doctor. Statistically it's difficult and it's also very difficult in practice. There's several things that you have to take care of to even have a shot at it. The nice thing is though it is a very simple process in the sense that there's a few key aspects that if you focus on those you're going to have a good shot at getting in. Obviously it's not easy but it is simple. So the first key aspect is a bit of a package deal and that's your GPA and your MCAT. And the reason I say it's a package deal is because you need both of these things together to even get your foot in the door. Now if you're somebody with the GPA or MCAT on the lower side, don't give up. There's still options and we'll discuss those later on. But if you're someone that's early on in their journey and you have control over these two factors, do everything you can to get the highest numbers possible in each of these aspects. Now you might hear about anomalies that got in with lower scores in each of these things, but believe me when I tell you those are the exception and not the rule. Having a high enough GPA and MCAT are the baseline requirements for a school to even consider you depending on their cutoffs. Now you can check what a school's cutoffs are on their websites or by emailing them, but again, if you're in control of these things right now, then don't even worry about that stuff. Just aim as high as you possibly can and focus all your attention on that. My GPA was 3.95 and my MCAT was 519, which is around 98th or 97th percentile. And again, people get in with lower scores than that, with higher scores than that. Your job is to get it as high as possible to give you your best shot. Now that you have your foundation built, the next thing is your research and extracurriculars that you do outside of school. Extracurriculars are all the volunteering, activities, hobbies, clubs, all the usual stuff that you hear about medical students doing, such as volunteering at hospitals or running a charity club, things like that. Those all fall under extracurriculars. And then research is obviously getting involved in a project that you're interested in or something that you're just doing to put on your application. Preferably, it's something that you're actually interested in. But you should do research at the very least just to have that box checked. Now this is a very important component of your application because the GPA and MCAT only show the school that you're a smart person and you're hardworking and you should be proud of those numbers that you've earned. But at the end of the day, every application that they consider is going to have high GPAs and high MCATs so it doesn't really set you apart. What does set you apart is your extracurriculars and research if you've done a really great project that you're passionate about. So with your extracurriculars, you want to aim to do things that you enjoy that also help people. It doesn't necessarily have to be medically related. For example, I didn't volunteer very long at a hospital because all I was doing was sitting there stapling papers. I wasn't learning anything. I was only there because it was at a hospital and I wanted to put that on my application. Instead of that, I was very interested in sports and volleyball. So what I would do in the summer is run youth camps based around those things. And that was a much better talking point in my interview as well as on my application. So again, don't just do a grocery list of things because they relate to healthcare and you think it'll sound impressive. It's much better to have a few things that you've shown long-term commitment to that you're genuinely passionate about rather than a generic list of things only because they relate to healthcare. In these extracurriculars, you want to show things that you would expect, such as leadership, teamwork, organizational skills, things that can be applied to medicine in the sense that the skills are the same, but not necessarily the activity that you're doing. So for example, if you're going to join a club, aim to be an executive on that club, or if things don't exist that you're truly passionate about, make your own club and recruit people to join it. The youth camp that I specifically ran, it didn't exist, I had to come up with it on my own. And it shows even more leadership and initiative. So either find things that you're passionate about and aim for high level positions in them or make your own. Extracurriculars can also include jobs. So don't be afraid to get paid for your work. It's not a bad thing, but also balance that with having actual volunteer work. I can't state this enough. Doing things that you're passionate about is going to reflect in your application, especially in your interview. The way you talk about these things is very indicative of how interested you truly are in them and if you just did them 
to put it on your application versus because you actually wanted to do them. The next piece is research. So research shows them that you're committed to science and you're interested in expanding your knowledge and producing new knowledge for the scientific field. It's important to do this whether you genuinely like research or not it's a box that you need to check so preferably find something that you're genuinely interested in ask professors that you like if you can get involved with their research or see if you can get funding for an idea that you're truly passionate about but research is an important box to check again it builds that foundation of your application now we're gonna have more episodes talking about what extracurriculars to do and how to find research, but this is just a general overview on how to get into medical school. So these things so far build the foundation of your application, and now the next part is your personal statement as well as your application. At this stage, you want to use your personal statement to take all these things that you've accomplished and you've done, as well as your life story, and be able to formulate it into a good entertaining and readable personal statement again we're going to make a video on this but just the basics are to make sure you get it edited no grammar mistakes no spelling mistakes make sure it's not too generic and it's authentic to who you are same thing with the application obviously no spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes and the important thing about the application as well when it comes to extracurriculars don't ever over embellish what you've done as far as hours worked or the role you played because you never know who knows who and if they make that call and find out that you were lying that's a huge red flag and you will not get into that school again stay on the lookout for the specific videos on each of these factors but for now let's move on to the last stage which is the interview stage so your GPA and your MCAT get your foot in the door your personal statement and your application is how you put all that stuff together, including your extracurriculars, and everything together earns you an interview. Now the interview stage is all about showing them that you're a personable and social person that is able to work on a team. They already know you're smart, they already know you're hardworking, and that's why you're there. Now it's about showing them, is this a person I'd want to work with for the next several years? Do I want to spend grueling hours of residency with this person? And again, we're going to make specific videos and podcasts on how to give a good interview and how to answer specific questions. But that is basically the framework on how to get into medical school. You need a high MCAT, you need a high GPA, and that gets your foot in the door. Most of these schools have computers analyzing this stuff, so if you don't meet the cutoffs, your application doesn't even move on to the next stage. So again, take care of that. Get the highest GPA and highest MCAT you possibly can. The next thing is your extracurriculars and research. Do things you're passionate about that also help people. Find a research project that either you just want to check that box or you're genuinely interested in it. Then you have to formulate all that into a personal statement and application. Then you'll receive secondary essays from your schools and you have to do a good job on those in order to be offered an interview. Then the interview, you have to show them that you're a good, sociable person that they'd want to work with. And then finally, you can get into medical school. Like we said earlier, this is a simple process, but by no means is it easy. But whatever you do, do not give up on it. Even if you're lacking in a certain area of your application, weirder things have happened, people find a way to get in. And we'll talk about what kind of options you have if that's you. But if this stuff is under your control, go out there and address each of these aspects and you'll be well on your way.